fall is here, and all of a sudden, my inbox is filled with questions about how to clean the Yoder, what products you can use inside, which products you can't use inside. So today, we're gonna do a deep clean. What's up everybody, welcome back to the patio. My name's Jake, you're watching Rum and Cook. Today on the channel, we're doing a step-by-step -step deep clean on the Yoder. It's been a little while since I've done it. I've got lots of questions coming in. A lot of it's from new pellet grill owners, and some of it is from people who got one in the spring or early summer and they're doing their first deep clean and they just want to confirm what products they can use inside and which products they can't. So today we're going to do a full deep clean on this. I'm going to show you a couple tricks uh, that I haven't shared before and we're going to get this guy looking like brand new. So let's have a look at some of our problem spots we have to deal with today. The outside isn't terrible, uh, you know, mostly just dust. It's always covered. The shelves are a little bit beat up. They've got a little bit of uh, grease and whatnot on them. They'll be easy to deal with. But as we get in a little closer, you can see my grease shield. There's a good buildup of fat and smoke and grease all over here. Uh, and really, this is getting bad because there's a gasket seal that goes all the way around your yoder. Uh, you can see it in here. And my front piece started to pull off a little bit. I just yanked it off and I haven't ordered a new one yet. Uh, so that's, you know, as the smoke and everything rolls out, it's really starting to come down this way. So we're gonna show you how to clean that. If you look at the lid here, we've got some buildup here. When you start to see things flake, that's when you know it's time to clean. Don't want that falling in your food here, but you can see it's starting to build up here. The whole area's got a bunch. There's a bunch in this corner here. The stack is filled uh, with flaky stuff. We wanna get rid of all that. And you can see in here that it's got a buildup on the wall. Uh, so we're gonna break all that down. And then my diffuser needs some love. We've got some rust buildup. Uh, it's been a while since I've seasoned that and scraped it down properly. So we're gonna do that as part of this process. Let's have a look at the tools and products we'll need to complete this process. So here's what we need. First and foremost, this is a messy job. You're gonna want some black gloves. Uh, you guys have seen me use these for a long time in my cooking videos, use them for cleaning. <laughs> Really, anytime I don't want to get my hands dirty. Uh, but I got to tell you, right now my link saves 40% on these things. So you don't see the link until you, you check out. So it's a little confusing. But during the checkout process, you're going to see that you're going to be able to get a case of 1000 for 129 I mean, normally these things are, you know, 20 bucks, 30 bucks a box. So it's a great deal. So I'll put that link down below. But trust me, you're gonna use them. They're great. I use them when I'm cleaning my car, doing all my wheels and everything so I don't get chemicals all over my hands. Uh, you're gonna need that. You're gonna need some Zep 505. If you guys have not tried this yet, you're missing out. This is some of the best degreaser around and it's really not that expensive at all. Um, all the stuff I have links down below. Citrus Safe, this is a great exterior cleaner, right? Um, this is not something that you want to use on the inside. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a little bit. Uh, but this is a more gentle product. It doesn't have ammonia uh, and some of the harsher chemicals that uh, you, know, you don't want to be breathing in. Additionally, you're going to want to use a little bit of a wire brush. I've got two versions here. One with bristles, which get a bad rap because they will fall off and people get them in their food and digest them. Uh, so when you use something like this, you've got to be careful. And then this one is one that's got a coil that will do a, a good job, but it doesn't have the bristles. And both of these are by Grill Art. Um, I use them both depending on what I'm, what I'm trying to get done. Uh, but the scraper is great on, on something like this when you're trying to get your grill scrape like so, which we'll do a little bit here. And the last thing you're gonna need is a toilet brush cleaner. Don't worry, it's brand new, it's clean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you're going to want one of these guys because this is how we're going to clean our stack and it will do a great job when we get to that part. And I forgot one thing, we will need a shop vac and you know, a while ago I broke down and bought one of these guys from Home Depot. I think they're 25 or 30 bucks, uh, but there's a side use for that and I'll give you that in a bonus tip later in the video. Uh, but if you have a Yoder, you're going to find it super useful. So. Really what we want to do is we just want to start to get this guy cleaned up from the inside and I'm going to knock everything in and then we'll vacuum it out and I'm slowly going to take it apart. So now the thing here is that you don't want to get this too clean 
the buildup's okay, right? It's seasoning. So there's no need to take it all the way down. I just brush the crunchy stuff off. And what you can do here is you can always turn this over. Most people forget about the bottom, but it gets a lot on it too. That's it, really just a quick, quick clean. Same thing for our bottom grates. And if you guys haven't seen these before, these are the stainless steel grates. Um, I like them uh, because there are two parts to fill the whole thing um, and with the cross hats. It's harder for things like vegetables or jerky or something to fall through. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my toilet brush cleaner. I mean, you can see the pile of stuff that came out of this. You do want to be careful so you don't get it all on your face. <laughs> Ask me how I know. And so just to give you an idea, let me bring in and show you this pile. Like look at <laughs> this pile almost goes halfway up my finger. It's a pretty significant pile. That's a good year of buildup just in our stack alone. While we're in here, we'll end up giving the diffuser a scrape. So you're going to get some rust buildup. That's normal. For a long time, I would fill this with foil, wrap the whole diffuser plate in that to help keep it clean. Uh, I've gotten a little relaxed on that <laughs> this year. Uh, but what, what we want to do is we want to get this perfectly cleaned and then we're going to soak it in some oil and we'll season it and the rust will go away. Same thing here with your diffuser plate in general. Give it a good scrape. You're going to get buildup of barbecue sauces and whatnot. And now we want to start to get into all this stuff. And again, the toilet brush cleaner is really, really nice for this because it just knocks it all down. Now, the one thing I'll point out here is that notice I'm not using any cleaner inside of this, right? Citrus Safe, uh, the bottle has actually changed since I bought this, but the newer bottle says exterior cleaning. It's not designed for the inside. I've had a couple questions about Zep degreaser. Again, not food safe. We don't want that in the inside. You're going to use a brush and you're going to clean it up. To have a buildup of grease or anything in here, it's really not that big a deal. Just take a brush and take it down, right? You don't want it shiny, uh, but a brush is enough to keep this in good shape. You vacuum it up. You can use a scraper as well if you want to get like a paint scraper or something that it gets if it gets really built up. You know, this this will work, but paint scraper is a little bit easier to use. Uh, but in general, as long as you do this a few times a year, you'll stay ahead of it. There's no need to start breaking out a bunch of cleaners to get uh, all the grease broken down in here. And in this case, we're going to give this a really good scrape, get as much off as I can because we're going to season it when we're done. And before you remove this, don't forget to put the back side. It'll just have buildup that's got to be taken off. And a real quick note here, <laughs> you've seen I'm scraping pretty aggressively here. Like I haven't done this in a while. I typically let things get a little worse than I would normally when I'm getting ready to do a video. Recently I did a video on my Offset Rookie channel and I had the firebox covered in rust and people were like, oh, you know, you should get, you need, might need a grinder or it shouldn't get like that. Or, you know, <laughs> I'm doing it on purpose. 
I'm not, it doesn't normally look like that. So if you're doing this every few months, three, four months, do it a bunch of, uh, you know, a couple times a year, it's not gonna build up like this. And then we continue on through the bottom here. So here's where our pellets land. You will get a little bit of a buildup there. You should clean this before every startup. That just makes sure you get optimal performance. And when I say clean this, I mean, all I do is I, I pull it out and dump all the stuff out there. I don't get out of brush and stuff. I just want all the, the holes to be open so the airflow can work properly. And now what we'll do is we'll just go and we'll knock down all the walls, any of the flaky stuff off the walls to try and get in the, in the bottom to get ready to vacuum. Once we have it all knocked down, we're gonna get a shot back and we're just gonna vacuum this out real quick. All right, so this is really hard to show on camera, but in the Yoder, your diffuser is angled down. And in this end here, we have a grease trap, a channel here. And all the oil will flow down here and then it flows here and then it comes out the bottom in our bucket like so. Okay, you can see some of the uh, rust there that was pushed through. You want to make sure that channel is clean so that the grease can flow out properly. One bonus tip I always like to share, it comes with a Yoder bucket. However, you can buy these online and they're just uh, disposable buckets rather than having to wash your bucket all the time. So I'm going to change that while we're here today. But really it's important to make sure this channel is clean. The one thing we're going to do, which I've told you guys many times, is up on the left side here, we've got our temperature probe. I'm gonna go get some steel wool and we're gonna give that a good clean while we're here too. So in here, this is our pit probe I'm talking about. Always wanna keep that clean. I just use some steel wool on it. As it gets covered in black and possibly sugars from barbecue sauces and whatnot, uh, it does cause the probe to read incorrectly a little bit. It will throw off the temperatures. So always keep that clean. So now that we have this all cleaned up, we want to do one extra step while we're here, and that's just inspect our silicone. So you can see where the bolts go through here for the variable damper plate. There's a, there's a, a bolt that goes through here. Um, there's also all around the outside, there's a bead of high temp silicone. Uh, shouldn't be something you have to deal with very often. However, inspect it goes around the firebox a little bit here. And if you've got any that's kind of starting to pull away, take it off and just re reapply some new silicone there. Make sure it's high temp and uh, preferably black so it blends in. And just give it a quick coating and let it dry and you'll be back in business. But uh, this stuff's all in good shape. So no problems there. And now we have the inside completely done and ready to be put back together. Before we do that, we'll tackle a little bit of the outside. We're not gonna need our tools anymore. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give these a quick wipe down before we, we, swipe, we uh, clean them. Now, Zep works great as a degreaser, especially on areas like this where you're gonna drop sauces and it actually breaks down the grease very, very quickly. So we're gonna let this sit here for just a minute. And someone recently asked me about the microfiber towels I use, the ragcompany.com. That's where I get all my stuff from my cars and uh, you know, get yourself a darker color because it's gonna get greasy. Uh, but this'll, when you use stuff like this, it just makes it so it doesn't scratch the surfaces. So, and these come up quite nice with just a little bit of ZEP 505. The side one I don't use very often, so uh, it's in really good shape. This one's got a little bit of a, a film on it. So we're gonna, we're gonna do an extra step on this one today. Same with the grease trap. We've got all this build up in here. Uh, the inside's not too bad. And real quick, like I said, 
in one of my other videos. Originally, I was like, ah, I don't know if you really need this thing, uh, but you'll be amazed at how much oil and fats and barbecue sauce will drip down the front, and that stuff's really hard in your paint, and this just helps protect it. Uh, so it is, it is a nice little add-on to have. So what we're gonna do for this one, this is gonna require to go inside because this is a pretty thick buildup. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some Bar Keeper's Friend. So if you haven't seen that stuff, um, I'll bring it out. It's a white powder. Works amazing on stainless steel. If you've got stainless steel posture or anything like that. You might remember Comet, Comet that's, that's still around. It's like green powder. I'm pretty sure it's still around. Uh, but basically what you do is you get a, just a little bit of water and a bunch of the, the, the Bar Keeper's Friend and you use it like it, as a paste. It's like a very, very fine sandpaper, uh, but on stainless steel, it'll take anything off. Um, and it'll work on good on this. Let me take this inside. I'm gonna take care of this and then I'll bring out the bottle and I'll show you what it looks like. So here we are back clean again. Here's what the barkeeper's friend looks like. And you can get it at Home Depot. I'll put a link down below on Amazon. It's several dollars a can. It's not expensive, it might be five bucks, but it's, this will last you a while. But as you can see, in five minutes, <laughs> five minutes we've taken all this up and just the, the little bit of grime that was on here. Uh, the one tip I'll give you when using that is rinse it well and you might want to use, uh, you know, I just used a, um, one of the blue sponges that's non, that doesn't scratch. Uh, use that and then clean the sponge really well, get all the product out of it and then just use some soap and just give it a wipe down after that because it will leave a little bit of a, a white film if you don't get it all off. Same thing when you do your stainless steel pots and pans. I'll clean it and then I'll rinse them off with soap and water when I'm done just to make sure they're properly clean. But I mean, it just does an amazing job. It takes all that off. And I mean, all this thick stuff at the end just cuts right through it. And you're looking like brand new again. The only thing we gotta tackle now is the outside, which for me, isn't too bad. It's more dust than anything. Uh, and then a little bit of the scrapings that came here. Now the outside, we're gonna use, this is where we're using our Citrus Safe. All right, this is great. You can just spray it on there. Uh, you're not supposed to use it when it's hot, okay? I mean, we're sitting out in the sun, we're not hot. Uh, and this, this will just take all the dust and, and I mean, it's an amazing gre degreaser as well. It uh, just has to sit for a little while. A little bit longer than our Zep 505, but this is much friendlier on the paint. You guys have seen me use this when I apply ACF 50 to help prevent rust. If you've not seen that video, uh, I'll put a link to it up here. You should check that out. But I'll go over my last application of, of Zep 505. They're in pretty pretty good shape with a very little amount of work. Off camera, I'll pull this out and do the whole back of it, right? I'm just kind of showing you enough so you get the idea. And that's really it. So, now, promised you a couple tips which I've shared a few throughout the way. The one thing, and I actually got this from a subscriber left a comment a while ago, uh, last year actually, and they told me to pick one of these guys up and use it to clean the inside. However, they also gave me one more tip. Let me go get another bucket. This bucket <laughs> says pellet on it. Why does it say pellet on it? So I keep this bucket clean all the time. And if I put too much pellets in here and I wanna change the flavor, what I do is we put this guy <laughs> on top of here and I suck the pellets out with a shot vac. They go in to a clean container and then when I want to use them again, I just dump them back in. So, you know, lots of other pellet grills out there have the ability to dump out your pellets. The Yoder does not have that. If I'm doing a full cook, I just fill it up. But if I know I'm doing a short cook and I might want to change, I'll just put in a little bit of pellets at a time so I don't have to uh, worry about it. Uh, but if I get it full or even half full and I want to change it completely, I'll use my shop vac 
and as long as you go slow, it'll, it'll get clogged up a little bit, but if you go a little slow, you'll be amazed how quick you can empty out your um, hopper and change up your pellets. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna flip this around the back. I'm gonna give it a quick clean just so we're done 360 degrees. I don't need to show that on camera. When I'm done that, I'll bring it back. We'll get into season the diffuser and we'll wrap up. Well, it's officially past 12 o'clock. It's actually 12.30. Cheers. I know you're wondering where my rum and coke is. We've got this whole thing cleaned up. Let's get into the next steps here. Get this guy wrapped up. When you put this guy back in, make sure it's seated properly. Uh, it kind of goes up and then it sits in. The ceramic igniter needs to come through here to light pellets properly. Uh, on occasion, there's been times where I haven't seated it properly and I'm wondering, <laughs> it's going, it's going, it's going. You go in and this is full, but the igniter couldn't touch the pellets. So make sure you do that. I just push down and give it a, a, a wiggle. Now for our diffuser, you can use canola or Pam. I usually go to Costco and buy the two pack. Uh, traditionally, I, I buy the canola spray oil, uh, but they didn't have that today, so they had Pam. Either will work. Doesn't really matter which one you use, but our goal here is to get this guy soaked in oil. So I'm gonna put it in upside down real quick. And give this a good old soak. And you wanna put this on real thick. I'm just gonna let that soak in for about 30 seconds here, make sure I got every spot. And we'll give this a turnover. Don't forget about our door. So now we've got our diffuser soaked in oil and all we got to do now is we're going to run it at 300, 350 for three or four hours. I mean, if you use a really, really thick coat, it's going to take on the longer side, but what will happen is when this is done, it'll just be nice black. It'll be nicely seasoned, just like your grill grates. And if you ended up taking your grill grates and getting them a little cleaner than you maybe wanted, or maybe you just wanted to do a deep clean, and you got them perfectly clean, which is fine. Put some Pam or canola oil on them, put them back in here during that process and get them seasoned as well. It just helps keep the rust at bay. I'm not gonna go through this process with you. Uh, you can babysit it for four hours and you'll see what happens. <laughs> but that really, that kind of wraps this up. The one thing I wanna address before we go is when I did my unboxing video, you saw me do a little bit of spraying on the inside. Uh, you don't have to do that, right? It's actually, it's not uh, something that Yoder tells you to do. Uh, it's just something that I like to do. But the one thing I want to remind people of is if you decide to put any on the inside, you've got to just put a very, very little bit, right? Um, but it's, it's really not necessary. I did that when it was new. I've never done that again. Uh, really, this is the only thing and the grace that you're going to have to uh, give a good season from time to time, more so the diffuser plate. Even if you use uh, aluminum foil, to protect it on there that actually promotes rust underneath so you're gonna have to take it down and give it a good spray but it really doesn't take that long do it a three times a year four times a year and you're in good shape depending if you cook all year round but that really what wraps it up we're gonna fire this up here and go through the process to season that and then or once we're done seasoning it'll be time to get it dirty once again so leave you with some final thoughts uh, again don't use any products on the inside of it, just a brush, scraper, toilet brush they saw me use, anything like that. Uh, there's no reason to use any chemicals in there. Uh, it's all surface stuff. Uh, and if you use a scraper, if it gets thick, you can get rid of that. So don't be using any chemicals in there. The only thing you want to use is a food safe oil, right? You could use that. You could also melt down some tallow and do that if you wanted to, uh, but that's super simple to do. But essentially we give the entire inside and our stack a nice good clean. We vacuum it out, we vacuum out the firebox, and then you can clean up your grease shield, your trays, tables, whatever you wanna call them, with some Zep 505, and then we give this a wipe down with some Citrus Safe, away we go. 
If you're gonna go a step further, now's the perfect time to give yourself a coating of ACF 50, and that'll just help with your rust protection. Again, I'll put the video link below and I'll put it up here on the rust update. So that's all I got for you today. It's a great idea to do this once or twice a year, spring or fall, totally up to you. All depends how much cooking you do in a year. Hopefully you're somewhat like me and you cook all year round. That's what I encourage you to do. Thanks as always for watching. We're coming up on 10,000 subscribers, so I really appreciate the support. If you haven't checked out the new shirts yet, do so below, got 25 of them. Thanks again, I'll see you soon.